Moshe, I would like to introduce you today for the first time to a very exciting guest and a very sort of cool educational pioneer who I first met about six years ago, I think, uh, when I wrote an article called something like Viral Video Star is Orthodox Education Pioneer. I remember his, it. Yeah, his name is Rabbi Menachem Bambach. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. Hey, Rabbi, welcome. Moshe, My honor. Moshe is really very interested in all that you have done and all that you are doing. We're so interested in the wide array of educational initiatives that you have geared toward uh, your Haredi communities uh, in, an, in a massive network called the Netzach Education Network. So please, I guess, start, start us off. Tell us about it. Tell us where you are. I know it's been a, a long road the last six years since we last spoke. Well, thank you. And a great honor. I, I feel so pleasant to stay with you and speak, uh, to be hosted in this amazing place. Everybody speaks about your podcast. You should know. It's very popular. <laughs> I think you mean more our, I don't, I don't mean to the put newspaper. down our podcast. I think you mean more our newspaper. It's a newspaper. Yeah. The, the podcast is, is yeah. growing. We're in the second season. <laughs> yes, we are in the second season, but, but, no, but, so but I appreciate the story, it. Yeah, the story is that uh, I, I, I'm not going to go over my, my original, the, the whole story, but I grew up in Masharim. I didn't speak even Hebrew until the age of 20 and in English, nothing. And I figure out I need to do something uh, with my uh, future. Uh, I know exactly what is mean poverty and ignorance. Okay, mm -hmm. so no one can let tell me about that. And uh, from one end, I really appreciate my community. I think there are great values and great great things that I would like to preserve in the community. And at the same time, I understood that if our community is not going to be a part of Israeli society. So it's going to be bad for ourselves and also for Israel. And as you know, just this morning, we know there are a million point three hundred thousand people in the Haredi community. It's about 12% 12 from Israeli society and 15% from Israel population. I right. mean, and if you put growing. aside the Arabs. Mm -hmm. Rebbe, can I just interrupt you? One of the things I've always been fascinated is you grew up in Meish Aram, you grew up in the Haredi community. There are many smart guys in the Haredi community, many people who are very intelligent. What made you, what, what was the moment or series of moments that kind of made you realize this? Or were you already, or was it a little bit later than the age, the age of 20? I can tell you that my, I have a very nice story. Uh, my grandmother, she's a Holocaust survivor, and she, when she uh, came to Israel, she was a part in the kibbutz Shomer Atzair. Oh. And one day, she, she, she went with the old group from Shomer Atzair to Emei Asharim. And she remembered that she has a uncle who lives in Emei Asharim, so she asked people all over, do you know where Davidovich lives? And someone said, yes, over there, exactly. And she came, and they was fascinated to see her. They didn't know if she's a, she's alive or not. And then the uncle said, "You're gonna stay with us." <laughs> so she never. So, so Hashemir Hatzair so, loses one. They get some Meir yeah. So she never left Meir Sharim. She got lost in Meir Sharim. So, uh, she didn't no, go back on the bus that I day. I feel, I feel, I'm so proud that wow. I I grew up in a place. I I met great people, and serious uh, Jewish heritage. Uh, uh, but at the same time. We understood it's not a kind of Israel we can really uh, uh, embrace. Uh, uh, people who are li live in those days isolated, not a part of Israel. I think they're damage, damaging tr uh, uh, dramatically the future of Israel, the resilience of Israel. And the day, so my grandmother, when I was a child, she said to my mother, be careful on me, Amenachem is a little shagets. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happens too, too dramatic. I mean, I just want to say, since I remember myself, I was very open-minded, but one day when I become a counselor for Russian immigrants, uh, came to me a young child and said, can you do me a favor? I need to do some homework in English, and I didn't know English. <laughs> and he saw in my face my embarrassment, so he said, I know English is quite hard. Can you help me do some homework in math? And I didn't know. It was a very terrible moment in experience. Just imagine. That a young kid knew more than a you at 20. Kid, as he, I was 20 and he's 11. And I don't know to... For basic... He didn't ask for the craziest equations. I mean... And then I, I went to my... Uh, I, I complete all the gaps. I worked for Yad. I have a second degree in Hebrew University in public uh, policy. 
I was involved in many initiatives to integrate Haredi in, in Israeli society. This is my main mission, but I really believe the best way to make it happen is via education. And uh, when I start in Ibn University, the Mechina, uh, I realize it's a good idea, but this is not exactly what Israel needs. Israel needs people in the age of one and two and three to be normal people. To be, to be educated, to have Torah as well, Irat Shamaim, loving Torah, but at the same time to be a part of the normal world. You can be a lawyer, a doctor. I don't need to tell you, you have the, the best examples all over here. Right. People who are, can be everything. You know, I give a speech, uh, the last year in Raphael. Raphael is the famous place where all the missiles in Israel is is designed and so it's a big it's a defense contract yeah, the, yeah. so I, I give the the annual speech there in Hebrew and the CEO came to me and asked me what's your dream and I said my dream is the next CEO is going to be my graduate but he's going to come with the Talmud in his hands this is this is a picture I, I just thinking and if you ask me it's already happens I can tell you many crazy stories about some of my graduates are involved in so many areas. And I have a lot of, uh, I'm satisfied about this. And they're going to places, your graduates are Netzach, so they're going to places like uh, Machon Lev or... Uh, yeah. And yeah. then are they, able to, are, they able to, are they able to go to, like, uh, to Technion or other places or all yeah, over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and can you start with also the age groups where you're starting and the numbers now, the yeah, current so stats? Yeah, so I started for 10 years ago with the Hasidic community in mm-hmm. Betar Elit. Uh, as I mentioned also in your article mm. for many years ago, mm. it was not easy. It was a lot of oppositions and from the community. But there's st- still opposition, no? Still, but it's different because now I have much more power. Mm. Because when I start, I had only 14 boys. They're the only criteria to accept those kids as I just checked if they are breeding. I didn't check if any cognitive abilities. Right. Just to make it happen, if they and can read in what language? I didn't, I didn't check Nothing. anything. Oh, okay. If yeah. you are breathing. Oh, breathing. Yeah. I thought you said reading. <laughs> no, breathing. Okay, breathing. sorry. Okay. If you are breathing, <laughs> okay. it's my fault. Wow, no, it's my no English. problem. No. Um, and, and, and yes, I can tell you that uh, when I start, so you feel you're isolated. You, don't, you cannot anticipate how your success is going to be, but you know you have to start your journey. And now we have uh, 16 schools in Israel, elementary schools, high school, boys' school, uh, girls' school. We have post-high schools. Mm. We have post-high schools that nursing school, very successful oh. nursing school. Girls or for? For girls. Mm-hmm. And we have for also for boys a pre-academic program for, for, to become a, a physician. A mechina, a mechina for, for, Haredi. For, for Haredi physicians. Yeah, absolutely. That's it's great. The doctors second, are like physicians. Phys- doctors, doctors. Uh, Can I just tell you a quick, a quick story? Turo started a, a physician assistant program many yeah. years ago in the 70s. They originally thought it would be for Hasidim, but uh, it turned out the Hasidim didn't have the, edu- the academic background. So it ended up not being, but that was the original goal. But I, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's, I'm just saying, that's, you're, that's amazing. So, the, okay. Uh, have they graduated from that program yet or not yet? Uh, yeah, so but now we have the first graduate from this program, and now they need to be accepted to one of the of Tel Aviv or university. I will let you For know the numbers, school. but we have uh, great results. Everybody that's speaks great. about, and that's the ba- the best way. So if you ask me about the oppositions, I am telling you now I have so many people with us, and so many people even they don't officially declare and that they're with us, but they really empathy and admire the fact that people have the courage to choose the, the future for their kids. Mm-hmm. It's so, amazing. So the, the primary goal of all of the Netzach education programs is to, is to create uh, reading, writing abilities, skills to, in order to have a career, in order to have a Parnassa, or is it also, it, does it also allow for a kind of student to have a dual curriculum with uh, Limude Kodesh as well, or is it? Yeah, is it a combination? I, I really believe, believe that the combination is a is is a part of the Kodesh world. It's not something separate. You have to be Kodesh as well, and as as secular studies, as science, it's not secular. It's general studies. Mm-hmm. I really believe to become to be a normal Jew that Mekadeshem Shemaim, you have to be oriented Jew. I mean, normal. You know that you, you are part of this, those kinds of community. I was very inspired in my life from Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein, mm-hmm. he was 
one of my greatest characters uh, in my life. I, I met him personally and we talked uh, sometimes. Um, and, and I really believe this is the best way to make, and you know what? It's not to change the community, to preserve the community. Right now, we have 10% of the community who are dropping out. Mm. And I'm saying the new generation between Z FS, zero, and 18, we have 56% from the community. Mm. It's very young community, yeah. very young generation. And just thinking how they're growing, doubling themselves, it's 7.2 in every family kids. Uh, interesting, today it was published in Machon Haredi from uh, uh, Eli Pale. He, he showed that 5.2 is in the Sephardi community, 6.3 or 4 in the Lithuanian community, mm. and 7.3 in the Hasidic community. Wow. It's interesting. Hasidic really have the highest birth rates, the more, highest more, birth than, rates. The more than the Lithuanian and more than, uh, it's interesting, yeah. I didn't know about that. Uh, yes, I I believe that those people, if they're going to have better anchors in their life, they can choose their life and also be a part, love Israel, and with solidarity. The idea of the of the Memorial Day mm -hmm. it was very simple. Right. How you can educate those kids if they're not a part? They have no idea what's going on in, in, in Israel. Right. This was, this was just, to, sorry to interrupt. I want you to say this exact thing, but this was what I saw six years ago. It was a video of Rabbi Bambach in a oh, classroom yeah, sure. with a, with 20 students or something, boys, saying, today is Yom Hazikaron, who knows what it is? And they were like... The video went viral, I yeah, think. Yeah, that, that, was, was, that a... was... And this explanation that you provided nowadays... Uh, n maybe now, could you tell me? Also, how was Yom Hazikaron this week in your in your community, in, in maybe in the same kind of classrooms that you were in then? First of all, this year, some of my graduates, I have now s more than 12 graduates in Gaza. First ah. of all, okay? Just a proportion to understand what safe. we are doing. Yeah. We don't need are, to these remember, these are, yeah, these just are. we are part of it, mm -hmm. okay? Not everyone is going, but mm -hmm. there are a lot, very nice percentage. And I think I can share with you more my experience with the army. I have great talks with the all people in the army about their attitude, about their fear about the, from the Haredi community. It's not just a, it's you know, it's a bilingual. Uh, uh, it's a bit ambivalent inside the mm -hmm. army about the Haredi men, and it's an issue we have. We can talk about, but um, the last Memorial Day. Many of my graduates, they came to the school. Some of them came with uniform. I can show you the picture. Mm -hmm. And they said, the most powerful memory that I have in the memorial days is from the school. And we were going to come back again and again and again. It's very emotional in, in the school. I, may, I made it very, it's touching. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's created, it designed their, their attitude toward Israeli society. So... And, and something very nice happened. When I start, it's, you cannot imagine how many people in the community said, you, did, you are crazy, you're disconnected. Right. <laughs> you don't understand what you are doing, you are. And the last Memorial Day, it was five or six um, ceremonies in many, many places, in Jerusalem, in Beit Shemesh, in many communities. And some of the head of Mir Yeshiva, of the Meshgichim, Rabbi uh, Ezrahi, he came and join a huge event of Netzach Yudah. This mm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And this would never happen if someone would not start. I'm happy that I start this journey. But you have to jump in. That, that's the idea. So much fear, you'd like your, the stagnation is terrible. I mean, and more and more, the young generation understand it. So that's why I'm saying, if you provide them new tools, new practice, how to deal with the new world, it's going to really influence their life and also change many, many people in the community. You make it sound so easy, by the way. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, you're saying before before the Netzach network started, uh, Yom Hazi Karon, and in fact, probably the entire fight, the city, the creation of the state of Israel was not discussed in Haredi schools. At all. It, it just, At so, all. Even so now, basically you're living in a place where you where the history is not known. Absolutely. Mm. I, I want to tell you something yeah. more terrible. I'm not sure if it's the right thing to say. In, 
you cannot imagine how many people in Israel, in our community, they don't know the warriors exist. I'm telling you. Some people, not everyone. And this is, just thinking about that, it's so painful. People live in a different country, in a different place. They go to the same grocery, they buy the same, the same fruit. And this is very, very sad. This is very sad. I'm, ta I'm saying it, I even tell some of my eyes because I love so much Israel and I think about the future of Israel. So, I, you know, we know about the 10% modern Haredim and the 30% of the Haredim with the modern touch and the 50% who are Haredim that uh, the majority of silent, I mean, the silent of majority. Silent majority, yeah. Yeah. And 10% are very extreme Haredim. So if you were speaking about those 60%, they're not a part of our mission. We're not going to change. We're going to change. We're going to influence them. It's going to take time, but they're going to stay there. And I think our main focus needs to be about those 40 normal percent. We have many stories. We can show many, many great signs that things changing. People change their attitude. People feel much more courage. I, I, so this is this is the hope what I I feel and I believe that this is what gonna gonna narrow down the problem from all the story from Haredim in Israel. Do you find that uh, it, there are certain groups in the Haredim that you're working? Uh, do you, are you doing okay with the Hasidim at all? Or you or no, all over. Lithuanian, Lithuanian, I start with the Hasidim. I have Hasidic schools. This is the first Hasidic school ever officially combined secular studies. But we are working with all Israel. I mean, I all the modern Haredim oh. and the conservative with the modern touch. I would imagine that the Sephardim are a little bit easier because they were meaning that the, there was no sense of Haredi Sephardim until it's a new, it's a modern phenomenon. Yes, yeah. yes. But my main Or they're more extreme, maybe now. I no, don't know. I mean, the main mission is to to go into the normal mainstream. I mean, I'm not going to edges, to communities. And as you know, the, even the Sephardi community, they try to uh, adopt the, the Lithuanian narrative in Israel. Mm -hmm. They try to be like them in some ways. So I'm not sure, we can see good things, but also you can see um, some regressions in, in many areas mm -hmm. in those communities. So yes, but we have some schools. You will never, uh, if you fit the school, it's a Svaradi, Lithuanian. Hasidim has their own schools because of their own customs and behaviors. But uh, we have some great, now one of our schools in Jerusalem is Nishmat Torah. Nishmat Torah it become the most popular school in Jerusalem, a Lithuanian. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. I started with six boys for f six years ago. This is a high school? High school, mm -hmm. a, yeah, a Lithuanian school, very special in, in, in Givat Shaul. Mm -hmm. And if you Svadi or Lithuanian, it doesn't matter. If you fit the system, you are, you are part of it. This is a part to what recover. Worked? What, what, what to made recover. it so popular? Why is it so popular? Well, it's a popular a great staff, very... Uh, you know, the Lithuanian yeshivot, they focus just on Torah studying and they neglect everything. You know, nothing is important. Just sitting. And I think so many people lost their life in those yeshivot. And when you have uh, a uh, Rosh Yeshiva who see you and, and also there are many, many informal activities. We have life skills. It's different. The, the future skill we know about creativity, about um, critical thinking, about communication, cooperation, those kinds of things. It's a new language in our community. We, we put cell, social, emotional learnings in Yeshivot. So this is what makes the issue very powerful. People love the, those issues, but so it becomes like, wow. So, so the, just so I understand, so the Lithuanian minhagim and uh, way of Torah learning is still taught, okay. but, it's at, but it's added to exactly. classes in communication, did, crit critical thinking. So you have basically um, schools within, within, a, within an already existing um, Minhag okay. networks. Is there are there other uh, other than Lithuanian? Um, you said you said Sephardim. And I mean, I mean the Sephardim and the, the Lithuanian is together. Oh, they're together. Okay. Beside now, we're going to start a new only Sephardic school in Hulon. Okay. Because it was a demand. 
uh, and I think it could be it could be great with that Hashem. And these and these kids are coming from from homes that don't have they don't have iPhones. They don't have the majority. They, they, they're not. Listen, they're not modern at all. I, I want right? to tell you. Yeah. Don't buy stories about the Haredi community. Okay. It depends. But <laughs> <laughs> well, how would they know about the Forty percent. I'm telling you the exact numbers. Okay. Exact. Not okay. be'erech. Not almost. I'm telling you. Forty percent as as now WhatsApp. Okay. <laughs> WhatsApp. Yeah. So the WhatsApp is very popular. This is no. I mean WhatsApp is the the most popular. But it's social thing. media. It, social it's media. It's really social media. That's what. Yeah. Sixty-nine percent as officially access to the internet uh-huh. in the corona time mm-hmm. yeah we start the first online school for mm-hmm. Haredi. Oh. we said are you going to sit we're going to teach the kids via the phone right. it's impossible you have seven children in every right. no, there there those words i know some rabbi who called himself and and made himself like asking questions it sounds like very natural uh, and people believe that it's not a, even in the zoom was Quite mm-hmm. hard, so just yeah, imagine. Certainly. So we start, and I people said, "How are you going to start this project uh, if you, you need the Haredi should have access to the internet?" And then I figure out that sixty-nine percent has access to the internet. They have access already. So I said seventy percent. It's enough to make it. Mm-hmm. And you're you, right. You know how many people we have in this site? How many? Thirty-five thousand people. It's English, math, science. We have now Amiram test. Amiram test. If you want to be a part of the higher education university, you have to have Amiram test. Mm-hmm. We prepare and we have many, many projects, mm. and it's become very a special and unique site. And you can see even regularly Bechoreishi, but they will never come to our schools. But they'll go online. But they'll go, go online. Yeah, they go online. Mm. It's amazing. So if you ask, change. This is a good sign. You okay. mentioned Rav Aaron Lichtenstein before. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a tough question. So, you know, Rav Aaron was, very, was known for literature, English literature. Yeah. But I'm saying, but that's, that's not a derech you're going in, meaning like that's, you know, you're really focused on things like civics, life skills, core, the core, we call it the core, like liberal arts, you're going to stay, you stay away from because that would get you, that would get you in trouble. Part of the related profession. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, where Rabbi Lichtenstein, he taught us about complexity how to live in a complex world and not to take uh, sides, you know. Uh, so this is exactly you understand from where you are coming and what's the need and which kind of education you need to provide. And the combination is enough tough. It's complicated. It's not easy. Sometimes, uh, you know, even my myself, I have a daughter, she's completely secular. It's not always easy. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I, uh, but the fact is that my graduates that they get the idea of to being Haredi Israeli, they are phenomenal. It's amazing to talk to them, to speak to them, and to see what they're doing and what the, their approach. I have now some graduates in Shmone Matayim. Mm-hmm. 8200, that's the Israeli NSA. Oh, Let's see. unbelievable. Right. I, I, I can give you, I will tell you, I give always uh, some uh, training in the Shabak. S- uh, how do you say Shinbet 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 FBI Shinbet and the last last week I gave a lecture for very a special group there and about leadership and change and I met one of my graduates wow that's beautiful <laughs> I said wow that's great <laughs> this is Masih is going to well, you, have, well, you, better, you better keep track of your graduates because you're going to you're going to need your graduates aren't you absolutely so they're going to need to be your I actually think I don't know, El- Elizabeth may not be as sensitive to it but what you just told me about the fact that your yeshiva is so popular is to me that's that's how you're going to succeed. I Meaning, not not Menachem Bambach being a principal. Absolutely. If you have a reputation of the, being the best yeshiva, Beit say a yeshiva, then the you're able to start other yeshiva based on that framework. Like you 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 really and it's it. I, I mean, I, I trust you. I mean, you tell me that it's the most popular. If it really is that popular in Jerusalem, yes, absolutely. Uh, Jerusalem is where you need to be. Okay, then you next need, next you need to go to Bnei Brak. I'm guessing, correct? Uh, we're going to start this year in Ramat Gan for Bnei Brak because in, in Bnei Brak they don't let us to start a yeshiva like this. But we're going to start. We have already. But how many students are in the online from from Bnei Brak? Ah, uh, we, we have, have we have numbers. Yeah, okay. we have numbers. I I don't remember. I, it sort of reminds me. Nice. 
of the the idea of being a force multiplier. Yeah. Of if you if you have you know if you have one school you have a hundred students. If you have two schools, two hundred. And then if you have graduates, if you have people who can go out and start their own schools, who have been trained in this way, then you can you can multiply your influence. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Yeah. Also, we wanted to talk to you about your what you're doing locally. What brings you to Teaneck and Englewood and New Jersey generally and New York? Uh, we understand uh, you're going to Riverdale for Shabbat. So can you tell us about your local supporters here? And you could feel free to shout them out. Maybe they will you, you share to, your podcast. You, you don't have to say much. They, to say they give names. to you. It's okay. But, <laughs> and, and if they don't want to be named, that's fine, too. Uh, yeah, you actually made a comment before I'd like you to address. A little, a little, is you're, you're getting support mostly from the more modern community and not the Haredi community. I'm actually a bit upset at you because I think that your next the, the next step for you is to actually to get support from the Haredi American community. But that's my challenge to you. Go, sorry. Um, please help me. I, I will be um, gratitude, gratitude about this. Yes, I'm, I, I'm very blessed. That I live, I'm a Jew. I live in Israel. And I generate a new generation for education for the future of Israel. And also the government gave us 80% for our needs, our income. I mean, uh, also it's together with the tuition uh, mm -hmm. from their parents uh, but at the same time I'm r I need to raise 20% each year in mainly not just for ongoing investment just to create new schools because after three, three years a school is fully covered mm. unbelievable oh. that is amazing so if someone want to invest he should know he can put once his money and after two years, it's fully covered. Give us an, a sense of a number, like because so, uh, people for, do to this. Build, to build to build a high school, it's a million dollar. That's that's. I have I have you, someone. Do you need a million? The government will help. Will yeah. Help. Okay. Yeah, the government. And after I I finished the, the school after three years, I have the right numbers. I have everything. Uh, it becomes and I have enough, the numbers, the all numbers of the kids that we need. It's it's almost fully. I will always invest more for sale mm -hmm. and for great things, but for the the system is sustainable for themselves, and this is amazing. Because sometimes people have some fear: how much I need to to pay? The, no, just one time, and it's your school. That's amazing. I have some people who made it already, and it's fascinating. Um, and and you know, it's what is amazing. It's not about the Haredi; it's about Israel. So you ask me why the modern Orthodox people they they worry so much about the future of Israel in all terms, about religious terms and about it. So they feel the best way to make the change is re-education. So they're why this is the population I feel they understand. We don't need to explain too much. When they came to the school, they see everything in one glimpse. And um, also, you will not believe, even secular Jews in America, they love so much what we are doing. Yeah. They really they appreciate it. And one very special guy in, in, America, in New York, he told me once, if someone asking what you do and you will understand, he, he, he will, so everybody will realize it's about the resilience of Israel. It's not, you, you're doing via your community, but the, the point is to make Israel much more stronger in the coming years. I will tell you more. You know Micha Goodman. Yeah. I'm very a close friend of Micha. Michael, Micha Goodman, he's a, he's a writer commentator. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I said, Micha, I'm going to go to the New York now. Everybody is, uh, his attention is about the war. You know, you come for education, ta da la da. It's not. Mm -hmm. yeah, the he timing said, may seem off, said, yeah. Say, say for everyone that you are the opportunity a day after. Mm. And that's, that's, that's your secret. People should not forget the day after. You are the opportunity. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. It makes sense. So, <laughs> it, it, it sounds better than what Israel, everyone's worried about Israel's post-Gaza, post-war strategy. Exactly. You, ha you have a strategy. So. Exactly. And what I like, I think, also about your approach is that you're, you're speaking from within your yeah. own community, and you're not pushing your students outside their communities, only for maybe Parnassa and for opportunities in terms of you know, shin bed jobs or whatever. Yeah. But like the, they they keep their core identity. They yeah. keep who they are and they keep their history. They just add uh, the ability to, you know, be, live above the poverty line and to have, you know, a variety of different sorts of, I think, awareness of the state where they live. 
and it's different from yeah. the like in the U.S., particularly in Brooklyn and uh, Manhattan, and New York State. There's a lot of like off the derech former Haredi educators who are fighting to educate Haredim, but it it's 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 very like. It's very, it's very tinged with, uh, with, um, with sadness and anger, and it's not the what you're presenting, which is I joy, opportunity. I, absolutely, I wanna, yeah. I wanna strengthen what you're saying. Yeah. I love the community. I come with loyalty, with love, with compassion. Mm-hmm. When I mm-hmm. see young kids demonstrating, they don't know about what. Uh, so it's compa- you have the, the, the compassion for them. Well, I want to say that um, uh, if you want any leadership, any any kinds of leadership and any leader, if you want to make a real change, it needs to come with love. Mm-hmm. If you hate or you're against, you will never, mm-hmm. you cannot convince people. So it's complicated. I, I have many. And you know, the, I have the privilege to criticize my community because I grew up there. Why should I criticize other communities? I, I don't know. I never grew up there. So it comes with film love, and I think people feel, I have to say, I know the only change will come by the map. It's not going to come from the rabbis, unfortunately. But I can share with you that I spoke sometimes with some rabbis, and they understand what, what I'm doing exactly. Because they but know what's they going on. Maybe. Yeah, but I don't have the courage. they also very... You know, uh, the, uh, they're very conf- um, uh, conflicted. Uh, yeah, conflicted about. And you know, some of the rabbis told me a famous one. He told me, <laughs> he said, um, to take a conservative community into change, mm-hmm. it could generate a chaos. And I'm afraid to be the guy to do to do so, uh, because uh, and and in, I can understand. I I I have some empathy of what what he said. So we need people. We need people bottom up to change to you know Bechemish now the first time we have a Haredi party that does not belong to not to the Galatora not Agudat Israel just our own party Bechemish. and they have yeah we have we have we have we have a lot the Yom HaZikaron memorial comes from those parties is it it's amazing. Of, I heard. I did hear about this. I heard. I heard about this part. So that yeah. No, that's well, uh, uh, there's some Anglo's involved in a little bit behind yeah, that. Yeah, also Anglo's. Yeah. You know. So tell us about the since the war is on everyone's mind. Tell us about your your students, some of whom are serving in Gaza, and the view of your students toward the military so and toward I, I, serving. I would say that I would say something like that. That two great projects happens after the Holocaust: oh. the Medinat Israel and the Haredi community. It's a great project. Everybody, you understand. <laughs> in terms of starting with very a few community a uh, very few people and become such an major an impact in israel now and everybody was developed by themselves now it's a time to merge between them i think this is the greatest mission to make them one piece to merge the haredi community in israel and israel, and israel. even though I the haredi think, community only succeeded in many ways because, yeah, because of the state of israel but, the, but i think things change if you're going to continue saying again and again the same you're going to lose a lot of people and i i love I just mentioned today also by is the, the test trimal. You know test trimal? Test trimal? Test trimal. Yeah, trimal. trimal. A test. A test. Uh-huh. Yeah. You want to, yeah. If someone, let's say, is invited for Shabbat in a different city and he forget his trimal, if he's going Friday night to the shul or not, 90% will not go to the shul Ooh. because yeah, you have. forget your trimal. And it's not pleasant what people are gonna say. So that's mean the culture mm-hmm. wins the, the theological. I mean the the, mm-hmm. religio- mm-hmm. the uh, religious, and 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 this is one the the young generation understand that we speak too much about not what's going inside, more about outside, and and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, the the minhagim are so powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not. I, it, I, I mean, it's, minhagim is Torah. Not even In some a, ways, minhagim yeah, is Torah. Yeah. But Shrimal, yeah. everybody understand. It's nothing about God. Right. It's just you know, just yeah. a custom. You know. I uh, I often when I'm in the car, I listen to um, the Or Samer uh, podcast by Rabbi uh, Breidowitz. Do you know him? He he he's Or Or Samer is a American yeshiva for 
Balechuva, basically men. Yeah, and he they Famous. publish. Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, they publish his Q and A. He's he is also like a former lawyer and rabbi from Baltimore. He's able to sit and speak to a variety of different people. Sorry, from around the world who come to uh, yeah, Anglo's basically who come to his yeshiva, and oftentimes they ask him like, "How can I be a Balechuva?" And what should my minhagim be? And where should, what should I do? And where should I go? And he's like, take what you learn here and also take what you learned in your communities at home. And like, if you grew up in Topeka, Kansas or <laughs> South Dakota, he, he said he was looking at a student, I think, who was in, who's from South Dakota, which has like no Jews, like zero Jews. And he's saying, take that and share. And there, he was sharing how uh, Rabbi Nassim Svi Finkel, yeah. who passed away, he was yeah. he was, like went yeah. to a modern Orthodox yeah. high school. He was from the Mir, yeah, but yeah. he but his family was from the Mir. But he 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 talked about basketball to the kids who came in and the beauty of a, a jump shot, you know. With the, <laughs> yeah. And he was able to sort of speak to worlds, and that's we Beautiful. we need more people Beautiful. like this, you Beautiful. know. It's, yeah, it's so powerful. It's so good. It also reminds me your story about your grandmother. Uh, visiting, finding an uncle in Mea Sharim. Yeah. It's so good. I don't think I heard that one from you before. And it reminds me of, um, do you remember when Rabbi Lau, the, the, the older, the father, first arrived in Israel as a child? It must have been around the same time as your grandmother. Yeah. Um, he, he showed up there and they, he had one brother who, who had to find him and he, he, it was like a, a, impossible, and they interviewed him at the at the beginning. Who's your father? Who's your uncle? Who who who? And he's he got all the answers right because he, but he didn't recognize even the people as who who were his. It was his wow. brother because he was a child when he when they when they left. He was eight when he arrived. He was the same age as Ellie Wiesel, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but these this this one interaction of your grandmother coming to Mayasharam to meet her uncle completely changed the course of Mayashar. Not or or Al Haredim. It's very interesting. Same with Rabbi Lau. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean yeah. Rabbi Lau had this crazy story about a, a man who asked him if he he said, Did you see the did you see the smoke in Auschwitz? Did you see the did you see the the smoke rising from the ovens and and Rabbi Lau or then little whatever is it, Yisrael Mayor. little Yisrael, Yisrael Mayor said, Yes I saw it and He's like, did you see the, the nishamot, the nishamas coming out also, and, and he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't know what you mean. I don't even know the word. He didn't. He, wow. he, he, he like it. It's like this, this the journey that our world has made from the from the Holocaust to modern Israel is amazing. Yeah. And these these but these small interactions are like tell the story yeah. you know they tell yeah. they, they're part of us and we should use them yeah. we should use who we are yeah. you know yeah. i like it. I, I, yeah. I, I like i never heard that idea of merging the two great projects post shoah <laughs> the state of israel and the haredi community you published an article a few weeks ago about civics yeah. about uh, which i read on your times blog yeah and i think we wanted to kind of close uh, to end a little bit about uh, that, that subject and also what's going on the israeli government Within the last 24 hours, about what's going on in the Haredi community, uh, what's uh, the laws being passed? I mean, I'm I'm sure you're a fan of them, but I'd like to hear your take on that. On yeah, uh, I just want to share that uh, everybody understand laws will never change communities. I mean, uh, we need to get to the art. We need to make people much more obligated. And one thing that I was involved in and very blessed uh, in October, since October 7. I, I ran my our campaign. The name was Haredim Israel. Very, very simple. Haredim Israel to encourage Haredim to come to the second stage of the army. Uh, I get a permission with the army to run the campaign and I worked with them. I was also enlisted in the army 70 days. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I was uh, in the army. And now, and um, uh, and the idea was to bring people between 25 and 45 to get trained, and then to if any job we can, you can get, just and and the idea I, I explained it for the for one of the chief persons in the in, in Sava, in the army. 
The idea is to normalize the uniform in the Haredi community. Once you can see in each city Haredim or wearing the uniform, and they are very proud to be a part of it, and this is exactly what is going to influence the new generation, the second generation. And because if you are just waiting now, it's something dramatic what happened, it will not happen. I don't believe in laws. I believe in, in, in a tough job. I mean, to work hard, to encourage more, to make people much more. And we know, as I feel in the education world, when you start, it's going to be very tough. The problem of Netzach Yehuda, that um, the, when they start, they, they, they took all, always the edges, not the mainstream Haredim. So people think, ah, oh, it's not real Haredim, okay? The idea now is to real, to, to raise, elaborate the, the, the trust in the community. And that's mean we need to build units that really provide the all, all what the Haredi needs. And once this will happen, and it's going to take time to show that you stay, you go in Haredi, I think the trust will go much, will become much more powerful. And we're going to see the great results and the movement. But also, we have to be honest. Some people in the army, don't want they them. don't like I spoke with many people, and 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 I I, I met many, some people in the army. I mean, from the highest level, right? Some of them they very they are ready for it and they understand that's what you need. But some people still they afraid it's gonna damage the culture. It's gonna interfere the system, and and you know what? For some reasons they're absolutely right. I understand it. So I think the main, the main effort is now to build special units, and I think the army is going in, into this direction. Uh, and this is what's going to bring more and more Haredim, because you cannot imagine now, the first time since October 7, we find out a new population in the Haredi community. I thought about the modern Haredim, they are absolutely a part of this mission, and the, and the conservative, the modern touch, now we find out the uh, people who care. People who care. It's amazing. People you would never ever imagine them being doing something for Israel, for soldiers. And now so many great and enormous stories happen in the beginning of the war. I know personally so many I would never ever imagine. And that's mean in the right moments things will change. So, your yeah. soul is stronger than everything, any culture. Mm -hmm. The soul, when the soul speaks, our yeah. spiritual world is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to those terrible moments, mm -hmm. everybody comes, everything comes out. So it's also something that create some change. change. So October 7th is, is creating change. Yeah. And yeah. you're not a fan uh, of... So, so I want to tell you, I was, I encourage, I ran a campaign. I raised money for this campaign to encourage, to make it a huge campaign. And right now we have more, almost 1,000 people who become a part of this project, and it's nice because to get 2,000 people, we have 10,000 because not everyone is accepted. You cannot imagine how many people was frustrated, but in fact they cannot be accepted because if you have uh, you know any background, if you have a medical background, so you're, you're, whatever. You get, you get, okay, I understand. But they, so but you they say, want to serve. The people exchange want to serve. rate is to is twenty percent. I mean, it's a problem. Like the amount of people who are accepted to serve versus those who try are apply. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, you just so, so you're saying that the law to to have charedim, yeah, have a different tracks. Yeah. You know, of, uh, like basically like almost national service, which exactly. I think is what's it's what's in the Knesset or going to be in the Knesset very yeah. soon. Yeah. So you're saying is you're not even you don't think that that's effective. No, it's not effective. It's not effective. And maybe in some ways there is no another choice. You have to do. Uh, so. But if you really understand the 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 way the Haredim are how the the system the the, mech the mechanism are working, you understand. We need to work out to make it happen, and we, it's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to. I think in the coming years we're going to see change. And uh, you heard about uh, some uh, new yeshivot as there for Haredim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have now, there is some new ideas. Maybe uh, Netzach is going to also start, maybe, uh, one of them. Uh, I think this is the best way. And you know what? Never, you never know. But what I saw 
in this last months and I met so many people, so many families, so many people who lost their, their siblings. I think who is ignoring the fact and still continue the same way as nothing happened? I can say something very crucial. Maybe he needs to consider himself he belongs to the Jewish people. Mm. Yes. Because mm-hmm. right. in, in the end, we, together no. is... To, we are Jews. That's what we are. Yachad, and, other, and that's, uh, that's what we say, right? Yeah. That's the slogan. Is so Yachad and Yachad and Yachad and So that's that's the that's the slogan. No. So tell us, to tell tell us where people can reach you and yeah. your website. So we your... have a website, Netzach Israel Education Network. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, of information in in the in in internet. Uh, we can find us. I, I, I just encourage people to reach out who thinks about the future of Israel, who wants to visit our schools. Mm. We have many schools. We have Bet Shemesh, Yerushalayim, Beta, now it's going to be also in Petach Tikva. And, and people who, who think, and, and they want for their grandsons a normal Israel in the coming years, don't hesitate. Just reach out. Be a part. We need your help. We need people's help. We can do it by ourselves. I'm a very little person with a huge dream, a huge vision. I sacrifice about something that I believe in. It comes from love to Israel. So I just ask for people, be a part of us, mm-hmm. please. Great. Okay. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Rabbi. Really Thank appreciate you very your much. time. Thank you, and we hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Rabbi. Very good. Thank you. Ooh.